Hey, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I tell you what, if you're not going to laugh during this podcast, then you know what? I, I don't know what's going on because I've got the I've got the Tomoff twins, Bill and Don, with me, and we're going to talk Chat GPT and just the warm up to our conversation. My stomach already hurts because we've been laughing so much. Great content coming out of this, but I love how these guys put this hilarious twist on just about everything they do in such a way that it sticks in your head. And I don't know, a few weeks ago, Don sent me a notice, hey, Pete, have you heard about this chat GPT? I said, actually, I had been. It had been about a month into it, and I've been playing around with it. And then he goes into what he's doing with it, he and Bill, and I'm going, I got to get you guys on the podcast. So first and foremost, guys, thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to spend some time with me on the podcast. Thank you, Pete. This is a great topic, very timely. Yeah, thrilled to be here. So in layman's terms, what the heck is chat GPT? I'll handle that one. It's, 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 every Everybody hears about AI, artificial intelligence, and how it's going to uh, replace our jobs or do whatever. The way I think of it and what chat GPT has demonstrated is it's really it augments what we do okay so from the standpoint of if it's in the category called generative ai and it's a company it came out of open ai and we've started to get a, a sliver of what it can do and you're reading good you're reading bad but it helps you in my the best example i can think of it gives you a start if you're doing something whether it's research working on developing something etc it gives you a fantastic start pete you had a great example on the uh, introduction to the podcast yeah i did the introduction um uh i went into chat gpt this morning and just put in some some information put the name of the podcast put the twins in twins name in chat gpt and just said give me a opening for my podcast and it, it took a few minutes it took it took about maybe probably the longest it took about 45 seconds to a minute and then started just going and i went okay you have to clean up a few things but to your point it's a start and compare that to what your normal process would be pete as far as the time <laughs> it would take you in the thought process uh, what do I write? Uh, okay. <laughs> what, what do you got to add, Bill? Yeah, let me let me jump in there because it, it, and we're going to talk more. I'm sure you've got this on the on the agenda, but how we think about it and how we can use it, um, we have to be careful not to, as you're seeing, like we talked about in New York Public Schools banning it. We have to be careful not to go to the extreme to protect our space and we want to ask and don and i do this all the time what am i missing how can this help um a funny example in our world was uh we were watching the world cup during december i'm a huge soccer fan daughter played for a lot of years and i was a referee so i know the laws okay not like i used to but i know i'm pretty good yeah. don called me and said hey well, what is this offside because I can't I don't know what's happening I so he went something's offside I, they don't <laughs> call it okay uh, Bill's got to help me well so he went into chat GPT and he said please explain the offside rule in soccer and chat GPT gave him an incredible response and he sent it to me and I said I read it and I go for the casual fan, that's really a good start. All right. And then he did a visual. Don did a visual where he said, okay, I've got zero knowledge. Ten is complete knowledge. This got me to about a five. Wow. And I went and searched, you know, I told him, here's the law 12 of, you know, explaining offside. And it goes into a lot more depth. But the key and what Don said, and you said, Pete, it's a start. That's the mindset we have to have. And I think the key point that Bill made without really making it, and this applies to however you, anyone uses it, is you need to have a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. to be able to challenge what it gives you back. 
Okay, so right. in, in Bill's example, I read it and I went, oh, this is great. Well, it's this much of this. Right. It's a start. And so now, thank you for that because I, I'm not, a, I, I watch hockey every now and then. I never grew up with it. And icing to me is like, like a snow cone. So I know it's a it's some type of penalty or something. And so when we're done with this, <laughs> I'm going into chat GPT. And I'm like, Can you explain icing as it relates to hockey? Because I've never understood it. And, and so but, <laughs> so there, there's been some ways I, I've, I've used it. I, I've gone, OK, I want to write an article on this topic. Let's just say business improv in the, in the workplace. Give me 10 headlines. Okay, so I read through the 10 headlines. Uh, take number two and write an introductory paragraph. <laughs> Did I just start laughing? I'm like, yeah. okay, can you write a conclusion for number two? And and I'm just sitting here, my jaws come unhooked. I look like a cartoon <laughs> character going. But to the but to the point of it is it's not perfect, but it just saved me two hours. Because now I've got something to start with. And this is something similar to Ulrich's introduced me to it. Any word? It was some version thereof where you could ask, it wasn't as, as, as refined as this, but I think it was OpenAI's first step into this. And it just gives you stuff and you can say, okay, this looks good, but now let me clean it up. Mm -hmm. And I think people are, yeah, as anything, remember the internet is just a joke, right? From back in the day, it's, this thing is never going to work. Okay, we, we or email, we, we've seen that. I think there's been just been a, a huge knee jerk reaction, but I think the best explanation I saw was from what you sent me, Don, about um, Seth Godin's blog. Why don't you share that? In essence, a summary of that blog. Bill, I'll let you do that. I don't have that immediately available you remind us what day that was peter do you have that I, close by here's, here's what i remember about that and he was he was trying to say in that blog don't overreact don't use this as a part of learning so from an educational standpoint use this as part of learning so and, and i related to this accounting course that i'm teaching survey of accounting at, at oklahoma state we have students come into the class prepared. I don't sit up and lecture them, or I hate that word. I don't have a conversation with them for an hour and 15 minutes. They're going, they're reading. We've got videos out there for them to watch. We've got supplemental materials out there for them to get up to speed, walk into the classroom, and start that conversation at that point versus coming in with nothing. And I, I think his point was that's learning. So why are we going to restrict it so that? we can't let them use this to get the start. Everybody just, I mean, like in the CPA profession, we're always trying to get the people who cheat, right? But those are few and far between. Same kind of mentality. Well, people are going to cheat. They're always going to find a way to cheat. But look at the greater good that this could have. Yeah, Pete, that you, while you were refreshing our memory, um, that was January 10th, and the title of the uh, blog post was, the end of the high the end of the high school essay. That's right. And he and he really got into exactly what you were saying. How can we lean into this and make learning better, um, and improve learning versus sticking with all you know, the teacher hands out an assignment, the hard work goes to the student, then the teacher just has this boilerplate of grading. Okay, right. They need to be more engaged in the learning. Um, and he talks a lot about the education system, but he exactly what you were saying. Let's pause. Let's not <laughs> need your reaction here. And yeah, it was very good post. That was January 10th. In case anyone's looking for Seth's blog, all you got to search for. Yeah, it's it's we're having this discussion at Oklahoma State now. What is learning? Is it is it taking an exam, or is that just memorization? Because we're seeing a drop off of knowledge retention as you move from one class to the next to the next to the next so we're going we're rethinking that how do you assess people how do you how do you assess them is it through tests maybe some is it through projects yes is it through other 
other means of assessment, not just exams. Yeah. And this is about learning. Pete, when, when Bill and I, and, and we've talked to a few clients over the last month or so, and one of the observations, frequent observations is, yeah, but I, I, what can I do with this? Okay. And, and anytime you drop something new or an idea on someone, immediately there's a defensiveness to, well, that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to each person to figure out how do I apply this to my world? Right. The, the beauty is when you think of, we're all used to using Google. Right. And part of your career is being able to effectively use Google. Okay. Knowing how to search, knowing how to mm -hmm. filter. Well, it's the same idea in 2023 with AI. You're mm -hmm. going to be, you really got to develop a skill set on how do I use this tool to help me do my job? Right. And, and but you, you, in one of the emails that you sent me, Bill, Bob, uh, the Tom, Bill, Bob, Tom, one of the, uh, <laughs> Don, <laughs> Bill, Don, 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 Bill, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'll have uh, to edit that out, Pete. Oh no, let's don't. <laughs> no, and you're not alone, Pete. <laughs> we need we need bloopers. <laughs> it, make, it makes us authentic and real. Yeah, that's uh, good. Uh, I, I think that you had mentioned that you 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 spent thirty days. You guys have spent thirty days using Chat GPT, and you correct me if I'm wrong. You said you're using Chat GPT as like a virtual assistant. Yes, personal assistant. Personal correct. Assi Perfect. Help me with that. Yeah, Tell Don, me how you're doing that. Okay. Don, wait, can, before you jump into that, and I'll give you the behind the scenes, you talk about laughing, and Don and I do a lot of that while we're <laughs> learning. Okay. But he calls me up and says, I've got, I've got two extra, the equivalent of two extra people working for me. I just, you know, 15 minutes and I'm on to my next thing. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Don. Pete, I'll give you two real simple examples and actually yeah. i think i forwarded uh one of the pieces to you that i did but i needed to develop the the concept of digital transformation is right. if i ask a hundred people what the definition of that certainly in the accounting profession you're going to get a hundred different descriptions okay and it's way more encompassing than i think at first blush we think of so on Christmas Day, I sat down, and this was in the evening, and I said, okay, I'm going to start gathering information on digital transformation. And you know this from having worked with this tool. I started asking the questions, and based on the question and response, I would go deeper on certain questions. Explain to me how soft skills incorporate into digital transformation and building it and building it. And over the course of 90 minutes, I asked about 75 to 100 questions. And I had, and the next day, so that in 90 minutes, I then took that content the next day, shelled it into a document that's a resource. Granted, it's, it's just a start, but it was 70 pages of resource content. And the way I put it was, if I were to do that myself, if I... I wouldn't because it would take me a month and a half yep. doing the research. I did it in 90 minutes. So that literally is like having an extra person. The other simple example I give people that everybody can relate to is we all spend time in Excel. Okay. So if I ask Pete, if I give Pete a problem and I say, now I know that the way to answer this, Pete, say a student, okay, is going to be an index match match, okay, which is a formula that people have a hard time wrapping their head around and putting together in a spreadsheet. But once you understand what needs to be done, and I did this, I just said, return this value from row 10, column 10, okay? I, I don't know what I do, but I just pretend like I don't know what that is. And it returned the index function perfectly with the reference. Then I said, okay, automate the row and column reference based on looking at this cell and this cell 
and revised the formula. And it came back with the perfect index match match. Now what happens when you do that, at least my belief is, it also explains to you what the index function does. It explains to you what the match function does. So instead of teaching somebody by going, okay, look at this data set, an index match will solve your problem, go figure it out. You're having them look at the problem, ask it in English, and then exploring why this solution works, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that is probably to me, so when I say personal assistant, when I'm developing models, and you know, I use that example, but any complex formula, I have, when I'm developing models, I have the internet with chat GPT open on one side of my screen or available, and I'm just going in and say, formula for this. And literally, it gives me the answer most of the time. So it's cutting hours off of uh, what I need to do. Yeah, and Don, that used to be you sat there with Google open and yeah. just doing yeah. modifying searches, seeing if you can find something that clicks. And yep. Finding your situation. <laughs> that's a great point, Bill. So finding your situation. Well, now you describe your situation and it gives you a potential answer. So there's hope for me with Excel. Uh, no, you're you're an expert. No, now. You're an expert. Yeah, I am. Not, I am. I, no, seriously, I am not an expert. I, that's a, that's a side conversation. With you. I did. I did my first V lookup in 15 years, and it almost strained a ham, pulled a hamstring or something. It was just. Oh my, I, I had an aneurysm in my head. It was just. It was. It was terrible. Pete, you should have used X lookup. <laughs> oh my God! Now you got to ask ChatGPT what's oh. the difference between VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP. That's exactly what I'm. Gonna I'm, I'm. I. I. I keep it open most of the time, but just listening to this conversation, I'm keeping it open on my second monitor room. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's a perfect example of where it becomes a learning tool. Yeah. You know, you might say VLOOKUP, and well, Bill or Don might mention, well, you really should have used XLOOKUP, and in your brain, you say. Why? Why should yeah. I have done that? Okay. Right. And yeah. then you explore it by asking a question. And in 60 seconds, you go, okay, I got a, a sense of what they're talking about. Yeah. Pete, let me oh. jump in with, uh, I just, one of the things I did with it, and Don and I are forever evolving um, a hit list around personal development. It's right. one thing we talk a lot about we encourage so much and sometimes or you know when you're just talking to someone well how, how do I explain it that it's as compelling to someone else as it is to me I'm not very good at that I'm an accounting guy so I went to chat GPT and I said so what we believe is and this is a theme out of give and take help people who then help other people. Okay, so we love to learn in order to increase our potential to help others. I mean, I, I'm not just learning or we're not learning and just keeping it. We mm -hmm. share it, we want others to benefit from it. And I went into chat GPT and I said, please give me 10 reasons that personal development is very important. OK, mm -hmm. and it gave me 10 and I I said, yeah, these are all things I think about, but I couldn't lay them down if you just said you got half an hour. OK, right. it just right. scrambles through your head. So I picked five of them and then I said I modified. Give me five reasons why personal development. Is important in order to help others. And then they tweaked most of the answers and explain that in having greater empathy, your personal development might allow you to create greater empathy, what allows you to help others. And I'm like this. So I, I literally cut and paste it, gave credit to Jet GPT and put it in our content. I like the referencing of Chat GPT in that. Yeah. Yeah, always. But 
let people know if that's what yeah. you're using. Yeah. Yeah, we're not out to game, and and this is part of the fear of people is yeah. they're going to game it, and right. you got to layer your unique voice to anything you do, voice and experience. That's right. where the value is. Like, it gets you racing down the right path. Okay. <laughs> this is this is really a, a quick starter. Um, so I, you know, being Greek American, I spend a lot of times in restaurants. I love to cook. <laughs> That's one of my hobbies. So one day I was sitting going, you know what really matters? I was watching diners, drives, and dives. They're talking about ramen. So I said, I want to make ramen for the first time. So where did I go? Chat GPT. Give me a spicy ramen recipe. Lays out the ingredients. <laughs> then goes into how to prepare it. And it was like, wow, okay. And I did it. And it was pretty good. I've had it a couple of times. And, and then I read somewhere where chat gpt can write jokes so i need help this is well i don't I, they need to really work on this because i i, I wrote into chat gpt write a joke about an accountant and a chicken <laughs> and the joke came back why did the accountant cross the road to get to the other side of the ledger okay <laughs> then, then i went include chicken in the joke <laughs> and it said why did the chicken why did the chicken go to the accountant to get a piece of the budget? So it's got its way, it's got a ways <laughs> to go before it can write a joke joke, but that's, just by doing that, I mean. Yeah. I, I think that's, uh, Pete, we were talking a little bit and, and probably be helpful to expand on from the perspective of the universities. Give your perspective. You know, we, we focus on the glasses half full right. all the time. Right. Give the perspective of what you guys are dealing with at the university setting. Well, that's an interesting conversation because that conversation is just now happening. And at the beginning of the term, which was yesterday, so this was this was last week, we got an email from uh, someone in administration about chat GPT and not so much just being cautious of it. And I was almost like borderline banning, but they didn't, I don't remember that word being in just a cautionary tale uh, and just keep your eyes open. But I'm sitting there going that cautionary tale right, versus here's how we could use it in the classroom. And I'm having a conversation. Yeah. I'm ha I've been having a conversation with uh, one of the faculty members uh, at Oklahoma state. And she introduced me, she at, sent something out, there's a, some PhDs who want to do a big research project on how will this affect accounting education because apparently it can figure out problems and stuff. And I'm going, well, that's nice and fine. However, if the students don't know how to do it and they're relying on chat GP, GPT and they want to sit for the CPA exam, well, that's not going to happen. Uh, well, it'll happen, but they won't pass. But it's uh, once again, if we can get them to think it's a step in the right direction, how do they yeah. do this and go back and work it through? Um, as it relates to it, it, but I think most of the fear is papers, writing papers, writing essays. Yep. And here's the thing. If, if somebody wants to use chat, my opinion, and, and I'm, I'm different. I'm, I'm a non-tenure track faculty member been in the business world, but I'm sitting there thinking if a student wants to use chat GPT to write an essay, that's fine as a start. Now, if they submit that essay as a final product and not modified it and to you guys have put it into their voice, then the question becomes, what does the faculty member do if they're suspicious? And I think what the faculty member does is tell me about this paper you wrote. Mm -hmm. Tell me the nuances of it. Tell me how did you, you know, where did you go with it? And if, if you get the deer in the headlights look or whatever, it's, then you go, did you use chat GPT? Yes, that's fine. However, did you modify it? Did you edit it? Did you synthesize it to your voice and what we're talking about? Or did you just submit it? And if I, if students, I just submitted it, that's uh, enough. Is it, yeah. is, is it cheating? I think that's where, I think that's where there's a, there's a great area. Is it cheating? Go ahead, Bill. Pete, I read a great article yesterday and actually this is all going to keep, you know, evolving at warp speed, but there was a young man who just graduated, uh, believe computer science, but he's been working with GPT-3 and 
he has developed an app and I tried to get on it yesterday and, you know, it couldn't, but he's developed an app that will interpret writing and say, was this created wholly by chat GPT? Hmm, okay. It, it will literally take it and say, yeah, there's, there's an issue here. So that kind of counter will be available soon. Mm -hmm. I think from the education perspective, like at the college and what you mentioned about a cautionary tale, mm -hmm. I think that's probably pretty smart on the education because they know or they suspect where many students might go. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, mm -hmm. it's a whole different demographic than Don and I, you know, or you right. dealing with the business world and we're out there trying to solve problems efficiently, effectively, and smartly. And so just a shortcut isn't going to, isn't going to win the game over the long term. Right. So and I think that's the university's responsibility to say, let's, how can we use it for good? And how do we monitor it in the classroom? How do when people turn in papers? I mean, I think we can tell uh, to some degree, if there's even a question about mm -hmm. it, if there's a question about it, then have the student in their own words tell you about the paper that they wrote. Yeah. Or Pete, your approach right there, which is having a discussion, is absolutely, to my mind, that's the answer. Because they're not going to understand the content of the paper. Right. Okay. And, and it becomes obvious if they didn't do the work. Right. It, it, it is. Um, and on a similar point, but different as it relates to open AI, uh, Sunday, I was watching uh, CBS Sunday morning and they're talking about art. Yep. And then all of a sudden I hear open AI. And I, I, I forgot what, so we've got chat GPT, GPT. I forgot what the name of the creative side of it is. It's a blend between something and ET or. Dally. Dally. Yeah. D -A -L -L -E. Dally. Yes. Yeah. And, yep. and I went, I went out to Dally mm -hmm. and I said, uh, so I, in Oklahoma route 66 runs from Tulsa all the way to the Texas border through Oklahoma city. And I'm starting to get into route 66 and stuff. So I said, um, Create a Route 66 highway sign retro. Think, think, think. Then all of a sudden, four pictures show up. <laughs> and I'm going, I like one of the four. This is cool. Then I went, <laughs> okay, so there's, there's a lake up in northeast uh, Oklahoma just before the Arkansas-Missouri border. It's called Grand Lake. And I was up there spending some time during the break, and they got these beautiful sunrises. So I said, you know, I want a, a piece of art on a sunrise on Grand Lake, Oklahoma. Think, think, think. What? Okay, this is getting freakier. But it's even, it's, even, it's even made its way into the artistic world. Now, there, yeah. there, there's some who say the, they're taking artistic licensing. So I could say, do it in uh, uh, the manner of Andy Warhol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if now am I infringing mm -hmm. on Andy Warhol's work? Should there be some royalty type of payments or whatever? So that that opens up a whole new can that they're trying to figure out. But to the point of AI, it's a start, and that's how I think I'm going. I'm going to. That's how I'm going to title this episode online: GPT, Chat GPT. It's a start versus it's an that's end product. Excellent. Yep. And I and I think Pete, and this is something that we're already seeing is this really is just the start. I mean. To sit back and we're talking about chat GPT, that's today. Yeah. Okay. Microsoft, most likely, at least as of today, is going to make an investment in the company. And the word is they're going to integrate it into their uh, Microsoft Office suite and the, and the search browser, which obviously will give them an advantage. Hmm. But Google's not going to sit still. Right. They're already talking about the tool that they have, I think it's called Sparrow, which is going to be coming out. And it's really going to be, we are just starting to your, right. to your point. Yeah. So the, the, the date that this was released, and correct me if I'm wrong, was like 
November 20th or something like yeah. that of last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And within two or three days, it had over a million subscribers. And right now it's free. Yep. They ain't going to last free for long. No. But right now it's free. <laughs> but the amount of traction this technology has gotten in a very, very short period of time. Yeah, it's what, two, three, two months ago. And it's on Sunday morning, CBS Sunday morning. I'm, it's maybe it's too fast. I don't know, but we're, people are reluctant to change. And when people yeah. say they're reluctant to change, I said, so are you looking for a wall phone at your house? That's got like a 40 foot cord that you can walk into different rooms or because you're dissatisfied with your iPhone. Oh no, no, no. I love my iPhone. What's well, technology. Let's change. Embrace it. Quit shutting it. Yep. And, and I think to, to your point, Pete, when, you know, it hit, and we all hear about AI, all of the sudden, we have this tool that is AI, and we can actually use it ourselves. Right. Okay, that's yeah. really the big difference. Yeah. We understand yeah. what's, we don't understand what's happening, but we understand what it can do for us if we get in and play around with it. Right. It's just investing some time in and to, and to learn what the capabilities for you using it are. For the greater good, versus moi, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to get an A in my accounting classes, and I'm going to sit for the CPA exam, and I'm going to pass. No, oh, well, you might get A's, but without I mean, having I, that deep learning, you're not going to pass. I gave an example to uh, a client yesterday. I was talking to him, and they said, "Well, how would you describe it really simply?" And I said, "Well, anybody that's gotten to our age." realizes that as you get older you get you have a little less energy like 10 hours doesn't just you know you don't get up and go at it for 10 hours i said so i use the analogy of in my world i might be working less but i'm three times as productive so every week my product my productivity is going up even though energy maybe going down a little bit so you guys taking naps in the afternoon now I, now, now just, oh. just 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 i'm gonna go on record don you're in cleveland in the cleveland area and bill you're in the baltimore area just yeah, I mean, yeah. yep <laughs> yep Pete, that's one of, the, one of the advantages of work from home is if you need to take what i call a meditation break well go for it <laughs> yeah and and Pete, when don says he's more <clears throat> productive <laughs> With Chat GPT, it was scary how productive he was before Chat GPT. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. Wait, I used to. I, I was telling somebody the other day. I said, I actually thought I was pretty good with Excel <laughs> <laughs> until I started using it with Chat GPT. <laughs> now you're making me really good to start using Chat GPT for all my Excel questions. At some point, Chat GPT is going to go. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about you use the example, but just, you know, off of Excel, you know, say I'm a, a marketing person and I'm working in Word, okay, or I'm, I'm yeah. creating content to just be able to go into Word and copy something, say, okay, give me an introduction like you described mm -hmm. on XYZ. All right, you, you got to start and you've barely done anything but think about what you want to write about. Right. It's it it, it 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 eliminates the writer's block. Yeah. I could have had my books done quicker. <laughs> Actually, Pete, you just made me think of something. And you're right. The books, think about that framing a book. I mean, <laughs> it would be much quicker. You know, it still has to be you. Right. Framing it becomes much easier. Right. I, I was telling Bill the other day, I said, you know, and you know this as as course creators. Yeah. One of the things that is a challenge, not a challenge, but you really got to think through it and spend time is what's the course? What's the mm -hmm. overview? What are the learning objectives? What's a marketing summary, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And that would take a good chunk of time doing it from scratch. Now you can literally have those components to edit within minutes. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a, that's, a, that's a good point. Yep. That's a, that's a very good point. And that's that's really the big thing. 
So guys, I want to, I want to be kind with your time. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate you spending. I mean, we seriously, we could talk hours on this, and, and we will. <laughs> we, we will. But uh, I appreciate you taking time in a short in, in a in a short window there because I think it was maybe two weeks ago you sent me that that chat GPT. We were able to put this together. You guys are busy. I'm getting. I just come off uh, of Christmas break, so I'm getting busy again as well. But I tell you what. And I, I said this to you guys before, I need at least maybe a monthly, if not semi-weekly dose of the twins, because every time I talk to you guys, I just leave refreshed. I've laughed a lot and I'm smarter by doing that. So go ahead, Pete. Bill, Don. Don. Likewise. Yes, Pete, a great, <laughs> great opportunity to catch up, hear about, you know, the education world and yes. the overall discussion of, chat gpt as don said and you noted this is just the start this is just the start yeah. absolutely yep yeah and but, um go ahead go ahead don. no go ahead don were you gonna say something i uh, no, no. <laughs> it's been it's been what? great and, and it's... in a month we don't need to do a podcast mm -hmm. but we ought to revisit this because this world will have dramatically changed Let's get it on a calendar. And, and actually, let me wrap up with one thing. I, I was talking to a, a CTO at a client of mine, and I asked him about and what I've done over the last month or so is informally hit as many people as I can and said, chat GPT, question mark. Okay, what, what are your thoughts? And most of you haven't heard of it, haven't heard of it, et cetera. I heard of it, that's it. Well, this person just replied back and said, whoa, have you spent any time with this? You know, and I called him and, and I said, what do you, how would you describe it? He says, it's like having a friend who knows everything, a little bit about everything sitting right next to you as you do your work or whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. He said, that's it. They're not perfect. But man, they give you whatever you need just to get started. There's that word, to get started. Yep. Okay, I'm going to... Let's sign off. Thank you guys very much. Stop Thank you. Thank Pete. Great.